we're now going to turn to a passage in Romans chapter 3, and um, I'll read the from, from verse, let's see, verse 9 all the way to verse 23. And so that we can get the context of what of this whole chap, chapter is, is saying. So in Romans chapter 3, verse 9, it says, What then? Are we better than they? No, in no wise. For we have before proved, both Jews and Gentiles, that they are all under sin. As it is written, There is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Their throat is an open sepulchre. With their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips, whose mouth is full of, of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways, and the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So here we have a passage that many people refer to um, verse 10, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. And then verse 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Those two small little passages out of this whole context of, of Romans 3, but also out of Romans as a whole and the entire Bible, they say, oh, this teaches that um, there's none righteous, so all are born sinners. That's the conclusion they come to. It doesn't say that, though. In context, if we're going to take it uh, uh, in light of what, it, what it's saying, uh, it says it's talking about both Jews and Gentiles, that they are all under sin. And it doesn't say that they're under sin because they're born that way. That would be read into the text. We've got to continue to read the context to see how they were under sin. And then that's why it says, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. It's none referring to, there's no um, group of people, Jews or Gentiles, that are righteous. They're all under sin. There's none that understandeth. There's none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. Now here's, here's where it starts showing you that it's not talking about innocent babies, children, that, that, that haven't come to an age of understanding. It says, they are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. So if you are already born a sinner, child of the devil, um, born out of the way, born unprofitable, then how can you become that way? And how can you... Uh, go out of the way? How can you lose your way if you never had it to begin with? And then it says, their throat is an open sepulcher, and with, with their tongues they have used deceit. Picture a little baby. You, you start to see how ridiculous this is to apply it to an innocent child. Um, the poison of asps is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed, in, to, to shed blood. It continues like these this is all referring to sinful man sinful man not not babies and so um then in verse 19 whatsoever the law saith that saith to them who are under the law that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before god so when we know to refuse the evil and choose the good we, 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 we now have a law that we need to obey, whether it be the law of our conscience, whether it be the law written on stone, whether it be the law written on our hearts. We have a law to obey. When we don't, we become guilty before God. And so by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. So when we do go against what is uh, what we know is the law, we sin, we spiritually die, and 
that is our demise. We, we are now, um, we have now distanced ourselves from God. We need to be brought back into a right relationship with, with him. And the only way to do that is through obedience to the gospel, through Jesus Christ and what he accomplished and um, being born again. So, and when it continues on, it then, it then says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So it's say, in, the, in that same context, it doesn't say babies have sinned and come short of the glory of God, or that they were born short of the glory of God. All the people that it's referring to in this context, sinful man, all man, has sinned and come short of the glory of God. So I think that, that passage right there is it's so clear that um, you can't use it to, to, uh, to teach inherited sin or that babies are born sinful because then it would, it would lose all, all meaning. And so uh, look at all the uh, attention on what they did, sins that were committed, not inherited. And um, yeah, and then it's interesting when it says, there is none that doeth good, no, not one. And then, uh, let's see, where is it? So it says, there's none that seeketh after God. In verse 11, there is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. This, this could also, it go, this goes again, if you're going to look at every single person, this goes against a passage in... Um, Jeremiah, I believe, uh, which says that there would be those who would seek after God. So, Jeremiah 29 and verse 13 says, uh, go back to verse 11. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Then shall you call upon me, and you shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And you shall seek me and find me, and when ye, when ye shall search for me with all your heart. So there he, said, he has it. There's going to be those who would seek for him, and they would find him as long as they do it with all their heart. So to say that Romans chapter 3 is referring to babies, referring to those people who at, would, would seek God, it's, it's not true. It's, it's, look, it's looking at the universal guilt of man and, and seeing that, what, that their sins have brought upon themselves their own demise. That's all, that's all that passage is, is referring to in context. And to teach inherited sin from this is, is um, not rightly dividing the word of truth. So this will be a short video just on that passage, and I will go into um, some more passages in the upcoming videos. All right, God bless.